From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello, and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. As you well know, we mentioned that we have a new format now whereby we are trying to answer questions. So many questions around the world right now. Why this? Why that? Why does this have to happen to me? So many people are asking those questions. Well, one question that we have been asked is this. Is there really a trinity? A three in one? And I'm going to go to Jack with that question here in just a moment. The history and mystery of the Trinity. Now the three in one, eternal Godhead. Three in one, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The three are one. All right, Jack, we're gonna, I'm gonna come to you. Will you please explain the Trinity? The three in one. This Bible says there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one Godhead. Now you say, well, how can that be? Well, when it talks about marriage, it says the husband and wife are one flesh. So there are three in this Godhead, and they work together in everything from the creation to the coronation at the end of time when uh, glorious rapture occurs and, and after the rapture and we're rewarded we are lowered to earth to reign in the great kingdom forever there's a kingdom coming and that's the lord's prayer thy kingdom will come thy will be done on earth as in heaven it's coming and it wasn't long ago that the holy spirit came to me august 13th it's a year and a half ago and he said it, you have been appointed by God and anointed by me to start preaching that Jesus Christ is about to return to set up the kingdom. So preach it and preach it constantly. And from this point onward, all the messages to come, I'm going to give you the fruit of the word of God from cover to cover. Amen. about this glorious thing. Christ is about to return. Amen. Amen. And you know what? You, we Christians aren't doing anything about it. We got a command here, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming again. And he's coming soon. And when he comes, all the denominational names on churches disappear. What? Yeah. Why? Because it will end the church age. You see, when the rapture comes, the believers are taken. And we're there seven years getting rewards. But if that's true, we're all the pastors and all the people from all those Protestant and Catholic churches. Gone. Yes. So there can't be any services here. So that's the beginning of the end. Now, the sixth dispensation in the Word of God is the end of the church age. You know, everyone's got the Bible so wrong. We talk about the end of the world, and the guys who say that are totally ignorant of the Bible. Why? Eleven times now, these guys have come saying, the world's going to end on certain the day. They made fools of themselves. It didn't happen. And then just recently, September 23rd, we had number 11. It didn't come again, and it's never going to come. Why? Because I've got a Bible that repeatedly says it is a world without end. Now, how do you get with all this baloney about the world ending? It's not going to. Now, you know the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us evil. Now, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. 
Does that sound like the end of the world to you? Or does it say forever? And forever is forever. This world is never right. going to end. Never. Amen. For millions of years, it's going to be sure. here. Oh, I'm, I'm telling you, we're living in a glorious time as we're going to see as we progress. All right, Jack, I'm going to pick up on what you said about the world, the world. But uh, who created the world? Uh, we're going to be talking about the United Trinity creating the universe, the United Trinity creating the universe. Let's just see what is out there for a moment here, please. Take a look, please, at some of the things. They are discovering deep space radio waves baffle astronomers, aliens not ruled out. And then astronomers find a new nearby galaxy. They're finding all new things out there. And then NASA's Kepler a Space Telescope finds 1,000th alien planet. Oh, my word. Are you kidding? All those planets out there. Well, Kepler, 186F, the first Earth-sized planet in the habitable zone. In the habitable zone. I can't believe what is out there, friends. Well, did the Trinity have unity when the whole universe was formed? It wasn't just one in the Trinity, but the Trinity. God really has opened your eyes on a lot of this, Jack. And I've enjoyed studying some of this with Jack. The Trinity are united in everything, aren't they? Oh, yes. Rexella, my whole point is this. This Trinity works together in such unity that everything they do, they do together. It isn't just the Father doing it. Christ on his own, the Holy Spirit, they're united. Mm -hmm. Now, let's check this, the Trinity, all right, and creation. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. But folks, that's all it was, heaven and earth. Because it says that the earth was without form, void. And the Spirit of God was upon the face of the waters, but right then, just a barren world. But little by little, something happened. And Proverbs says, who hath established all the ends of the earth? How did everything come to pass now? Who did it? What's God's name? What's his son's name? Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. There is already now the father creating with the son and the Holy Spirit was by the water originally in Genesis 1-1. Right. Wow. Think of it. Everything now has been put in place. And it's the beginning of civilization. Now, that could have been after millions of years of just being a barren we're with nothing here. And then all of a sudden, something happened. And it says, in the beginning, the beginning what? Of creation. Mm -hmm. And so they created the world in which we now live. And who was behind all of putting it together? The Father and His Son. And the Holy Spirit, because we read earlier in Genesis 1 1 that He was here. So there is the Trinity. Everything you're going to hear now is the work of this wonderful group of three and the one Godhead, only one Godhead. You see, marriage is two people together and it's called one flesh. These are three together and it's one Godhead. You don't need anything more and there'll never be anything else. I don't care how many religions. There's 1,700 cults now and 2,500 religions. Finished! At the sixth dispensation when he wipes out all the religious groups to start the kingdom. Something new and wonderful. Now, you say, why would that be? Because he has 10 commandments, not 10 suggestions, as we've been doing the last few weeks. And the first one is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. 
The three of us are the one eternal Godhead and nothing else can ever exist. Impossible. They will be false cults. They'll preach damnable doctrines. Doctrines of devils. It's here, ladies and gentlemen. 2 Timothy 4, 2 says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why? The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Don't want to hear it. Forget that Bible. Now, give their ears to teachers who will tickle them with fables, damnable heresies, doctrines of devils. It's here, ladies and gentlemen. We're now down to only 36% of the people who used to attend churches on Sunday. When I started out Rick Seller, we had revival meetings. I had 800 of them just in this country. It got so big, I had hundreds of invitations. Revival, revival. Men were on fire for God. I had 234 citywide crusades with 10... Thousand pastors sponsoring them and 50 million attendants. It's finished. You can hardly ever see him place anymore. It says revival meeting. And I'll tell you what is really sad. Do you see your pastors on Sunday morning having altar calls? If they don't, shut your door, you hypocrite. God says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And when we have the rewards passed out, he has the soul in his crown and millions are going to stand there and never having won a soul. Oh, you're going to be ashamed. Mm-hmm. Ashamed. We're to win souls. And I am so fired up for God. I've seen I tell myself alone, one million souls saved in our meetings. Now, I was hesitant of any great number, so I said, I'm starting right now because of what the Holy Spirit did on August 13th, a year and a half ago, when he came and said, you've been appointed by God and anointed by me to be the last great prophet. It's going to bring millions to Christ. And first of all, you have to find a way to reach every human being. Yay, 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 Oh, Rexella. Yes. What a job it's been. Mm-hmm. Well, I got on with the great crusade group I was with, and they used to run me. He said, I'll help you. They got busy. And they got me on every major radio station and on all the t- television stations across the world. And the last report was, Jack, you are now reaching every human being in 247 nations. And that's six, seven billion, six hundred million per week. Wow. But you know, I'm also on YouTube and that's free and they run two and a half billion. So now I got two and a half billion more than I need because there are only seven billion six hundred million on the earth. And Jack Van Ippy, a little boy that came from Belgium, he was born in this country with Belgian parents. He spoke the Flemish language, never knew how to speak English. And in grade school, he, he went in hidden bushes for a while because he couldn't communicate with the kids. But he raised me up. And the churches opened up across America. And the consuls and teachers of all the great universities, that man deserves doctor's degrees. And I've received 16 of them. 16. They said, why? I have memorized this word from cover to cover. Mm. Cover to cover. I have gone through it in my work 40 times 40 times I have gone through this book from Genesis to Revelation 
I didn't memorize all the things about the stories, but I did 21 of the 30,000 verses. 10,000 were stories. It's better just to memorize the doctrines. Mm. And I have. Amen. Honey, Amen. Mm -hmm. even now after my coma, I came home, I didn't know anything anymore. All the verses were gone. And I, all the doctor said, his mind is gone. He'll never preach again. But God had a plan for you, Jack, and he brought you back. And now, as you mentioned, you're preaching to millions around the world. But, uh, and thank the Lord, you have a message for this horrible message. We are right now where the Trinity created the universe and uh, also uh, created mankind in Genesis 2, 7. But mankind wasn't so good. You know, Adam and Eve, they fell. And so God gave, of course, Moses the Ten Commandments. And um, the children of Israel didn't really um, follow the Ten Commandments that much either. So God had a plan. Not only did he create man, but he had a plan for their salvation. Now, did the Trinity create the plan of the Savior of the world? I would like you to see a picture. I love connected with that, Jack. Yeah. Just love it. Here we are, Mary. Oh, my. A virgin. This is a sweet picture. Almost saying, how can that be? I know not a man. That's what she said when God told her that she was going to have the baby. Well, thank the Lord. God had a plan, and the plan was created by the Trinity. Correct, yeah. Jack? And the reason God had to do what he did is because there wasn't a human being on earth that hadn't sinned. All live sin and come short of the glory of God. Short of it. So he had to do something different. He said, I can't put any man in there. There's not one man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. And if anyone prays that they're not sinners, they're calling me God a liar because I said all have sinned. So what do I do? We've had the Jews, sincere people, but because they turned against Jesus, and John, the gospel calling him a sinner, said, you are born of fornication, sin, sex. No, none of the Trinity has sex. They are holy beings. Anything they do is create. So there's a virgin called Mary. And God says, Mary, you're going to bear the Son of God, Jesus. She said, how, how? I don't know a man. You don't have to. God's going to create a special thing in your womb, a miracle. And his name is going to be called Jesus. But while he's in your womb, he's also called Emmanuel. Why? God with us. God in your womb. And the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, Mary. And that holy thing which shall be born to you shall be called the Son of God. Now, mm -hmm. here is Christ on earth. Only members of the Trinity, three, two are spirits. Christ was a spirit, became flesh. But he was first called the Word because he would be the one that communicates with the public. So now he's communicating. He's here on earth. He's preaching. And one day, his blood is shed. Animal blood couldn't do it. The Jews had created that. And God says, it's not possible blood of animals can wash away sin. Only cover it. And because it's covered, you Jews can't get to heaven. It has to be taken away. And the Lord Jesus appeared after that birth and said, I am the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It's only been covered. Now I'm going to take it away. And he went to that cross. He says, I gave my back to the smiters. My cheeks to them who plucked off the beard and the hair. They used to me the Roman cat of nine tails. 
And every time it entwined me, the pieces of metal would tear my flesh. Then they pierced my hands and my feet as they laid me on the cross and nailed me to it, and the blood was flowing everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, you say, oh, I'm going to get to heaven by my good works. No, you what? Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. There's only one way to be saved. 804 times it's Jesus. 804 times, yeah. 400 says Jesus is the only way. I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. And then another 408. It says, it's his blood. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth from all sin. And millions have come to Christ by trusting in the blood. And there's only one way you're ever going to get there. It doesn't matter what the Muslims teach or anyone else teaches. No other guys. Come at it, number one. And there's only one way. The blood of Jesus. Forget all the other religions. They're all going out of business after the rapture. And even the churches of Christ are going out of business. When we're raptured, there's no one here for seven years to hold meetings. The dispensation of the Bible says all the tags, Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalian, finished. There's only going to be one religion. And it's Christ has been with his people at the raptor. They've missed the greatest war of history. Now it's the end of that war. It's the battle of Armageddon. He comes back with his people. He cometh with clouds. Every eye shall see him. You know where he comes? Not to Rome. Jerusalem. He has always loved the Jew. He loved the Jew so much that he said, Israel's the apple of mine eye. Israel is my fiance. Israel is my wife. He used those terms of love and in German. And he said, I'm going to give Israel an everlasting name. And that name is where my kingdom is going to be set up forever and forever and forever. And there's never going to be an end. Oh, yes, Jack, it's so wonderful to know the Lord is coming back again. And are you ready? There's only one way to be ready. I want you to take a look at God's plan of salvation. I love this picture. In fact, it's hanging in Jack's office here at our headquarters. How wonderful. The blood of Christ cleanses from all sin. And here he is coming back. Oh, my, to set up that kingdom. Amen. But you know something Jack brought out in the message today? He is coming in the rapture to take his children. If the Lord were to come today, would you be ready? Would you be forgiven of your sins? You can be forgiven of your sins. If only you'll accept the Lord as your savior. Will you open your heart to the Lord right now, ready for his coming at any moment? Pray this wonderful prayer, Jack, about accepting Jesus as a personal savior. Will you do it? If you get ready, you come back with him to set up that kingdom forever on earth. Heaven transferred to earth forever and forever and forever. You know what you're going to miss out on if you don't come to Jesus. It's going to be a place where there's no more death, no more sorrow, no more hospitals, no more anything except joy. The earth will be filled with the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, good, faith, meekness, temperance, as the Holy Trinity controls everything. Get ready, Father. Speak to that needy heart. Holy Spirit, speak to that heart. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, work in that heart. Draw them, Father, to Jesus. Now, pray this prayer to the Lord Jesus. I see you are the only way. The Bible mentions it 804 times and your precious blood. And I'm trusting in the merits of your shed blood. No more am I trusting in myself. My good works could never do it. Your work has done it, Jesus. I receive you as my personal Savior now. I ask this Jesus in your holy name.
Amen. Amen. Oh, did you pray that prayer? If you did, please write to me else you need this little book. I say it every week. First steps in a new direction. The Lord will walk with you, give you peace in the troubled world that we're living in right now and deliver you from anything you don't want there. First steps in a new direction. Our mailing address is Jack Benibby Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. Remember to ask for your free copy of the booklet, First Steps, when you write. Our address, once again, is Jack Penneby Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. And now I want to draw your attention to our wonderful offer of the week, the final seven signs pointing to the fact that we can be the generation when Jesus comes, the final seven signs. Now, this is Jack speaking. Born into Christ, return in the coming of the oh, kingdom. Oh, yes, Here absolutely. For the generation. And he preached at a wonderful church. Or, or, well, yes, a combination of many, many churches in Lansing. 3,000 souls opened their hearts to the Lord. How wonderful that we can know that we could be that, uh, the final, seeing the final signs, and that we could be the generation ready for the coming of the Lord. Well, here is our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Don't put it off. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing to watch and to know and to learn. All right, Chuck. Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of twenty-four ninety-five. To Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. And I just want to make it an emphasis here. Make the 800 number call right away. It will really, really help you to understand why 3,000 souls found Christ in one service. The final seven signs, oh, Lord, come quickly. So call or write. And we'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. And next week, woo, Jack, you're going For to be preaching next on next two that. weeks, I preach this all over the world, 72 nations Every major city in America can, and millions saved, and every headline now, two weeks of headlines proving it's about to happen. We're the generation. Christ is coming. Oh, yes, the Lord is coming very, very soon. And we pray that if you accept the Lord, you will write and let us know. And we're going to be looking forward to being with you again next week. And don't forget, God cares for you, and so do we so very much. Bye-bye. The preceding program was sponsored by the partners of Jack Vanapie Ministries.